Good everyone, welcome to Charge. Nathan Schmuck is here with me and after round three, Nathan, it's been another busy weekend from the Match Review panel. Second straight, Matty, another big week. Yeah, let's get stuck into it with Daniel Merritt from the Brisbane Lions first up. Facing a two-match suspension, he's been charged with striking Gold Coast's David Swallow. This one has been judged intentional, medium impact and high contact. Yeah, not sure what else he could have been going for here, Matty. He's just struck him running past, flicked the left arm out. Quite a severe contact made to David Swallow who stays down. I think he's quite lucky to get away with two weeks. Of course, the MRP and Mark Evans have the power to send things straight to the tribunal. Do you think perhaps they should have used that option here? You're right. The MRP or Mark Evans under his new powers could have done that. They could have looked at it and said three down to two, probably not severe enough. Let's take this to the tribunal. Maybe four weeks would have been a fairer penalty. All right, next up, another incident from the Q Clash. This one involving the Gold Coast Suns, Stephen May. He's been handed a one-week ban for a bump on Dane Zorko from the Lions. It's been graded negligent, low impact and high contact. Let's take a look at this one. Yeah, so it just follows through. It looks a good hit, but he's obviously caught Zorko high in the MRP's eyes. I look at this, I don't see any head contact, but that's something they're trying to stamp out of the game, so he's been charged. Yeah, that's the key to this. Look at the, the head clash. Was there actually head contact here, do you think? Well, I don't think there was. I think it's more top of the shoulder, which a player can still be done for high contact for. But I don't think this was really a reportable offence. OK, May's teammate Brandon Matera has also been cited. This one is two weeks down to one with the early plea for contact with Jed Adcock. Negligent medium impact, high contact, as I say, two down to one. Yeah, if we just look at this, the, the contest in the air, Brandon Matera has chosen not to set himself to crumb, which he could have, or contest the ball. He's just followed through and made the high contact there in the bump to Jed Adcock, who was cut up and had to leave the ground with the trainers. Yeah, right. Fair enough, this one? Fair enough. OK, now to one of the more controversial instances from the weekend, and this one was involving Devin Smith. He's been charged with striking, intentional, low-impact body contact. A one-match sanction must remain that way. But as we have a look at the vision, look at the contact with Bernie Vince, as I say, this is going to draw a lot of attention. It is, Matty. Really minor contact happens a lot in a game of footy. They're just going back to set themselves for the stoppage and just puts his arm into his back. Intentional, obviously, but insufficient contact, I would have thought, to constitute a report. The MRP seems to have focused in on this one. We do see a lot of similar incidents like this, though, happen on the footy field. I'm just thinking, you know, at the start of a quarter, for example, where there's a lot of bumping and, and stuff going on. Uh, it does look relatively innocuous, even though he obviously meant to do it. It does, and it happens in most matches. Start of the game, you're right, in each matchup, players are bumping each other, melees, this will happen all the time. He would have got away with a reprimand, but a bad record gets it up to one week, which does throw the spotlight on it a bit. All right, let's turn our attention now to Taylor Adams from Collingwood. He has been booked for rough conduct against Joel Selwood. He has a previous poor record, which means this one can't be downgraded to a reprimand. It's been judged negligent, low impact and high contact. Let's take a look at the vision. Yeah, well, it obviously takes a fair bit to put Joel Selwood on the ground and to get him angry, which he was angry at this. He had plenty of time, Taylor Adams, to, I guess, pull out after Joel Selwood sent off that handball. He chose not to, followed through, and that's why he's been charged. Yeah, it does take a little bit to unsettle Joel Selwood, doesn't it? It does. One of the toughest players in the comp, and he wasn't happy. We saw that, so that's probably a fair indication of whether it was fair or not. All right, Luke Shuey now from the Eagles. He's been charged for this off-the-ball incident. Striking is the charge. Tom Curran from St Kilda was the victim. It's been graded intentional high... Uh, sorry, low impact and high contact. A two-match band down to one with an early play. Yeah, not great vision of this, but we just see Shuey come up behind Karen and he struck him there, put him onto the ground. An investigation into this one, so we assume a medical report from St Kilda was involved. And that's, I guess, resulted in the charge against Luke Shuey. Yeah, limited vision, as you can see. This is one that uh, they did spend all day looking at, didn't they? They did. It came in last, so... Yeah. All right, now some relief for Tigers fans. Two key players, reprimanded and not suspended. Let's begin with new Tiger Matt Thomas. He's been cited for a tackle on Bulldogs captain Ryan Griffin. Got a lot of attention. This negligent low impact, high contact, one match down to a reprimand with an early play. Yeah, well, the amount of tackles that Matt Thomas is laying in a game, he was bound to, I guess, have one like this. I think he's averaging probably seven, eight, nine tackles a game. So he's just slung Ryan Griffin there, all in the one action. But the thing he's going to be held accountable for in this one was the, the contact Griffin's head made on the ground. It was quite severe, so that's why he's been charged. Yeah, but obviously the, the head is uh, such a focus at the moment. So he does get away there, though, with a reprimand. Another one here for Richmond fans. Jack Revolt, OK to play in the game against Collingwood, escaping with a reprimand for a tripping incident against Tom Liberatore. Reckless, low impact, body contact. Yeah, similar to Sherrod Wellingham in round one, this one. Just found himself out of position, wrong-footed, flicked his left leg out there. And that's, a, I guess, a, a clear-cut tripping charge. 
Most tripping charges get away with a reprimand, and Jack Rewalt's the same. Yeah, OK, uh, that one I think pretty clear cut. Let's have a look at a couple of incidents where players have been cleared. This one was a match day report from Saturday. Jared McVeigh was looked at for contact with Matt Jench of the Crows. Talk us through this. Yeah, so he's just followed through with the bump, got down low and possibly made a bit of contact there high on Matt Jench. Looks as if he may have grazed the chin, but insufficient force, I would have thought, to constitute a report. And a sigh of relief just finally for a big name docker. Michael Walters has not been charged for this one with Hawthorne's Will Langford. Yeah, just a timely reminder, I think, for all players that you bump at your own risk. Will Langford had his hand up there, which I guess saved Michael Walters a, a stint on the sidelines, which he surely would have had if Langford didn't have his arm up there to protect him. All right, there we go. That is charge for this week. Nathan, thank you so much for being here as always. Thanks, Matty. Nathan Schmuck, and you can shoot us both a tweet if you'd like to discuss anything we've discussed here today. A full text report of all the incidents online as well for you. For now, it's goodbye.